Equilibrium is one of the most important concepts to master. Acid-base reactions, buffers, titrations, solubility, as well as electrochemistry are all based on equilibrium. Various aspects of equilibrium usually takes up almost one-third of the second semester of general chemistry. This lesson discusses the basic idea behind chemical equilibrium and explains how to set up a typical ICE calculation. The idea behind equilibrium is simple, but calculations involving equilibrium can vary from very simple to very complicated. Fortunately, most equilibrium problems can be solved by a single standard method. Practicing solving problems is key to learning equilibrium. The video solutions has many worked examples of equilibrium problems. Most chemistry courses start with stoichiometry. In earlier problems on stoichiometry, we've always assumed that all reactions go to completion. And for these problems, the limiting reagent alone then controls the extent of the reaction. Well, what we told you earlier is not the whole truth. In fact, for a lot of reactions, they will stop far short of completion. This is because reactions can come into equilibrium before they exhaust the limiting reagent. And once a reaction reaches equilibrium, the reaction will appear to have stopped. Equilibrium is actually a condition of dynamic steady state. Think of a fountain. Water is consistently fed into the system, but the water level appears to be static. And this is because the water is also drained at the same rate. At equilibrium, the forward and backward rates of a chemical reaction are equal to each other. Once the system comes into equilibrium, the concentrations appear to stop moving. But in fact, the forward and backward reactions never stopped. They are constantly going. Only the concentrations have reached steady state. So we use both a forward and backward arrow to represent an equilibrium. Next time at the fountain, you can do an experiment. Find the water inlet and try to plug it. If you can slow down the inlet flow, you will see that the water level should drop because the input and output rates are now out of equilibrium. One thing that fountains cannot do is to seek a new steady state because if the input rate is out of sync with the fixed drain rate, the water level will eventually fall to zero. But chemical reactions are different. Reaction rates depend on concentrations. If you reduce the concentration of one reactant, it will slow down the forward rate. This will temporarily move the system away from equilibrium and the product concentrations will start to drop. But since the product concentrations are decreasing too, the backward rate is now slowed down also. Eventually, the forward and backward rates will move closer to each other and the system will find a new equilibrium position to settle into. So when a chemical equilibrium is perturbed, it will attempt to move to a new equilibrium position to relieve the stress applied. And this logic is the idea behind the Le Chatelier's principle. Interestingly, the equilibrium concentrations of a reaction always satisfies the equilibrium constant expression. For example, if you have a reaction 3A plus B going to 2C, the equilibrium constant is defined as K equals the concentration of C to the power 2 divided by A to the power 3 and the concentration of B to the power 1. The exponents are just the stoichiometric coefficients. The amazing thing is that the concentrations of all of the reactants and products always satisfies the equilibrium expression no matter which equilibrium position the reaction is at. Furthermore, if there are several equilibria going on in the same system, every equilibrium has to be satisfied. Using the value of K and the stoichiometry of the reaction, you can solve any equilibrium problem. If you are given initial concentrations, you can always compute the equilibrium concentrations for all reactants and products. To manage an equilibrium calculation, an ICE table is useful. You write down the balance equation on top and next to it write down the equilibrium expression. In the first row, I stands for initial, so in the first row you put down the given initial concentrations. In the second row, C stands for change. You write down the change in concentration for each reactant and product in order for it to reach equilibrium. In the last row, E stands for equilibrium. You apply the changes to the initial concentrations to obtain the equilibrium concentrations. To demonstrate, we'll take the reaction above and assume that the value of K is 4 times 10 to the minus 6. 
for the initial concentrations, we just use one molar for both A and B, but no product initially. Clearly, we don't know the numerical values for the changes needed to reach equilibrium, so we will represent the values by a variable x. The key to remember is that the changes in the concentrations of the reactants and products are related to each other by the stoichiometry of the reaction. Since there is no C initially, the reaction will have to move to the right in order to reach equilibrium, so the changes of the reactant side are all negative, and the changes on the product side are all positive. If the reaction moves to the right, every time three A's are used, you will need one B to go with it, and two C's will appear on the product side. So the changes in the concentrations for A to B to C must satisfy the stoichiometric ratios of 3 to 1 to 2. And to enforce this, we put in 3x, x, and 2x for the changes. An easy way to remember this is to just transfer the stoichiometric coefficients down and put them in front of the variable. Now apply the changes to the initials to get the equilibrium concentrations. You can then calculate the actual numerical values of the equilibrium concentrations by putting the numbers in the third row back into the equilibrium expression and solving for x. As we would sometimes say, the rest is just math. Check out the video solutions to find out how the actual numerics works. There are a lot of details we don't have time to cover here. You certainly want to learn them thoroughly. Remember, practicing is the key to mastering equilibrium problems. See if you can finish the rest of this problem now before you check out the solutions. If you solve this problem correctly, you'll find that the equilibrium C concentration comes up to be 2 times 10 to the minus 3.